All right, everybody, so we have hit um, our second overheat. I was shooting from 926 to 954, and then I was starting to see the overheat indicator come on. So let's just follow through. We're gonna turn it off. Okay, so we're gonna turn it off. Then we're gonna turn it on. Still says the indicator. We're gonna go to menu. We're gonna go to date, time, and zone. We're gonna go to the day. We're gonna move it up by one day. Press okay. All right, and then we're gonna, but we have to take the battery out, so I'm gonna do that. Okay, so battery's out. We're gonna wait 30 seconds. So um, I was able to record just fine for, yeah, from 26 to, so about over 25 minutes or so of just time to record and do short clips. Um, I'm just trying to shoot some B-roll, uh, B-roll clips here and there. And then, like I said, once we get to 30 seconds, we're going to go ahead and turn this on. Okay, I think that's, I think that's good. So we're going to go ahead and pop it back in. Alright, so indicator's gone. Um, what they say is when you turn it on, turn it back off, and now it's going to write that data. There's something that's going to be written onto the camera. And then when we turn it back on, we'll be able to correct the date. So we're going to go to menu, because obviously it's, this is the wrong date for me. We're going to go and fix it. Back to the 7th. Press OK, and um, we're in business. The hey, what's going on, everybody? It's that one camera guy. I'm back and again with another video for you. That initial video you just saw was me running the hack on how to circumvent the overheating on the EOS R5. I did this several times, and I had no issues. I was recording B-roll footage. I had it my the R5 on a gimbal, and I was going around shooting in this auditorium to get some really fun B-roll, shooting an 8K RAW, 4K 120. You know, this is basically a scenario where I could find myself in where I wanted to get some B-roll. Maybe you're shooting a wedding and you're doing video and you have some time, free time to do some B-roll shots. This is perfect. You could you can get some really nice 4K 120, 4K 60, whatever you want and not have the fear of it shutting down on you because you can circumvent that abruptly. I want to give a disclaimer though. I'm not telling you that you should do this. I think you should wait on more people to test it out before if you're, if you're not sure. But uh, before I dive in more, I want to give credit where credit is due. I did not come up with this. This came from the EOS HD forum. There was a user by Vision Rogue that posted the steps. Now, I don't know if it came from someone previously than that, but they gave some steps on how to go about it, and I go over that in the video. So, uh, and then he also, or Vision Rogue posted some additional steps as well that I followed along, and that made sure that I did not lose the date and time on my camera. So the date and time maintained itself on all the files. So uh, going back to the situation I was in, so I was shooting, I first tried 8K RAW, and then I switched over to 4K 120, and then the camera didn't even shut down officially, it just said it won't record anymore. So let me go ahead and jump over to that clip really quick so you can see, this is what I ended up seeing. So I saw it go zero, zero, and then the little indicator comes on. A lot of you are familiar with this, those of you that have been pushing the camera, so it's at 4K 120, and that came on. So it's not even saying technically that it overheated. It's just saying that the temps are pretty high and that it doesn't want you to record. There was no official shutdown. So even when I get to this point, you can go ahead and run those steps. Now you can go ahead and um, go from here and follow the procedure. So if we take a look at the video, as I'm going along, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna turn off the camera. So if we take a look here, I turn the camera off that's the first step that you're gonna do. So you see the indicator come on. It could even, by the way, folks, like it could, if whenever the indicator comes on, I don't think it even matters. So as soon as you start seeing it come on, you can start this process. So I turn the camera off. That's the first thing you do. And then um, I go to my menu and I'm gonna to go to my date and time. So I go to date and time. I'm gonna push the clock one day ahead. So I'm gonna move it up to the eighth, click okay. And then I need to go to my battery. And so this is the tricky part. I removed the battery door so this wasn't a problem. So basically what I did was this. I put the little piece of paper to avoid the little sensor and then I just, you know, popped the battery out 
just like that and the camera shuts off completely. So we go back over here. So we've already changed the time since we, we shut down the camera, it saved our files already. So we, we're good there. We take the battery, we wait 30 seconds. So I'm waiting 30 seconds for this. Uh, if you do it too soon, you'll have an issue. Like the, it'll come back up red. So you, may, you won't be able to record. So wait 30 seconds. I pop the battery back in uh, and then now it's gone. So I was pointing out that I can start recording again. But before this, what I do is I follow the procedures uh, that was given by Vision Rogue. So I shut the camera off and apparently that does something, write some data onto the camera and then I'm gonna turn it back on. So I turn it back on, it looks good. I, I'm not seeing any issues. Then I go to my menu, I go there, I drop the date back to the 7th and I am back off recording once again. And I had written that much to my card so far as what I was showing there. And that is it, folks. That's the procedures on what to do. Now, I did this three times. So I was in the auditorium shooting. I was recording video, all this stuff. And I would see the indicator come on. And then I would keep pushing it until it would say zero, zero up on the top. And then I just ran through the process. I even did it with the 8K RAW the first time around when it officially said overheating, shut down. I turned it off, turned it back on, went through the same process and no big deal. All right, so that is the hack. And again, I don't recommend you to do it unless you, it's at your own risk. I'm not telling you that you should do it. I'm just letting you know how it works. So there's another method to this madness if you wanna go a more safer route. If you have your R5, you can blow a fan on the side of it. Now, I saw this first posted by YouTuber No Life. I'll also link that down below. He did a live stream where he had a small, small PC fan on the side of the camera and he was able to record uh, in excess of any amount of time in 8K, no issues. Uh, so I also tried it myself and I, I have a desk fan. So I set the desk fan to blow air this way and the camera did not have an overheating indicator at all shooting at 8K all eye or something like that. I just reset, format the camera and kept going and going and going. And I did that three or four times and no issues at all. So that's what I wanted to go ahead and share with you in the video, uh, in this video here. This really opens up the door for this camera and it piques my interest even more. Uh, that's why, again, the tilt to concept may be a benefit or it could be a better option for people. But think about it like this, okay? I want you to think about this like as a big picture. The camera, when it first came out, recording in 8K or 4K 120 was a very dicey situation. New firmware version 1.1 comes out. And now there's a little bit more playroom with recording. When the camera says you can get about 15 minutes of recording or 20, 15 to 20 minutes of 8K or 4K to 120, I'm getting about 15 to 20 minutes. Like I saw 20 minutes. So I did the trick. It gave me like 20 minutes and then it shut down. I shot for another 20 minutes, did the same thing, and then it stopped letting me record again. I did the trick again. So there's a very, there's a consistency in this process is what I'm trying, I'm noticing uh, about this little hack that it's reopening the, the floodgates to that time. Can the camera get really hot? Okay, so now this is the thing that you might have a question about, and I think this needs more, more research in it. Um, if I jump back over here, there was a user by Coffee that posted this. Grant, I don't, I don't know, I don't, um, I wanna clarify here. So I think Coffee, this user here, saw this indicator come on, but granted, they were saying it was for stills. So I could be wrong. But there could be, this could be the actual overheating indicator that, so there's two, right, for, for video, and then there's one that says like the whole system, right? There's the artificial one potentially. I'm not saying it is, but more like the artificial one that Canon places in there. And then there's the one that's like, this is the real temps. Now, some folks have pushed their cameras up to 75 degrees Celsius. Uh, I think Horshack is mentioning here, or that's what he knows. Um, or someone else tested that out. So the cameras can get pretty warm and they can still manage. So I don't know what that upper threshold is gonna be for the camera and if you're doing any prolonged damage to it. So I don't advise that you do it at your own risk, but it can get you out of a pinch. I think this is gonna, I think this could be a really great solution for, for situations where you want the best quality and you wanna work around it. So imagine you were shooting something and you maybe you just needed an extra 20 more minutes you run the little trick, the little hack, and you're good. You can get another 20 minutes of recording in 4K 120 or 8K RAW if that's something that you want to do. Um, and then you're, you can do it again, another 20 minutes, if, and that's it. Maybe that's all you needed. 
it, it can save your butt in a situation where you just need a little bit more time to record in these higher uh, higher options. But folks, let me know your thoughts down below. I'm not gonna I'm gonna be honest. I mean, I have I'm still gonna test it out at an actual event, but my, my I'm definitely leaning more and more on the R5 as far as the camera is concerned of my interest for it. And, uh, and again, I'll talk more about it in my full review once I'm done testing the camera out more. But this is some really interesting development. If you do try it out, and again, at your own risk, let me know your results on it. Check out the links to the threads that where this first came from. And that's going to do it for me, guys. Don't forget to drop a like, get subscribed, and check out my other content. Peace.